Hi, I'm Caroline Evans. I'm Jeff Evans. And uh, we're excited to be here. We're excited for the work that um, that you all are doing, and um, our family, in particular, has been impacted by um, tongue and lip ties in a lot of different ways. And so it's <laughs> our story is helpful because uh, we kind of you can kind of see the time progression in, in us. And uh, you know, Jeffrey had his jaw surgery, and our children were trying to prevent them needing that down the line. And uh, so we're excited to be here and to share our story so that people can see how they might be benefited from this as well and what things they can be helped with and what things they can prevent in their children's lives. We have three children, ages 10, 7, and 5. They all have tongue and lip ties and of um, various degrees, um, but they're pre all pretty severe. And one of ours has the enlarged lymph nodes or the enlarged Tonsil. uh, tonsils and they all have a, you know a constellation of symptoms and some of them we really didn't know how to help them with and so it's really reassuring to hear how these things are all connected to this common cause and by dealing with this route they will be helped with these things that we really just felt powerless to to address you know they pretty much all grind their teeth uh Charlotte and melody probably the highest they snore. Uh, they snore. Difficulty uh, breathing. Difficulty night. sleeping. I think Lily's the best sleeper, but Melody and Melody gets up just about every night with you know, nightmares. nightmares and comes, she comes to our bed every comes night. Comes to our bed, and you know, at some point in time, uh, there's it's rare when she sleeps through the night. And, our son Shiloh has ground his teeth down to the enamel already. He's only seven. Yeah, and uh, and so lots of uh, we've seen it. We've seen that they've had breathing issues and. Uh, and like kind of said, I just had I've had lip and tongue tie. I just had uh, uh, I've, I've had orthodontia expanding my my lower palate uh, to 40 millimeters with uh, with Dr. Hang, and then I went and had surgery with Dr. Movahead in St. Louis, and he uh, butterflied out my upper palate and put put pins in bolts and uh, did a lip and did the uh, Z plasty on the lip and tongue tie. And advanced my jaw forward nine millimeters, uh, so I have a profile now. And you shifted it up and forward. And right? shifted it up, yeah. I've moved it yeah, counterclockwise like forward. It my airflow went from like this, from 8.2 cc's to 18.1 cc's, uh, 223 percent uh, gain there. And so, it's a miracle. It's and that was two months ago. Yeah. So uh, this is only two months post op. Dropped like 25 pounds in in that time frame. His blood and so, pressure's down. So it's just a matter of if we can avoid that, that with our kids, <laughs> we want to, right? And you know, know that our story is not you know not unique, really. It's just it's uh, not many people uh, uh, talk about it. And so finding Dr. Zaghi and finding the the, uh, the the medical professionals that we've been dealing with, we feel grateful. We feel grateful. We're so grateful. Uh, I mean, we thought the best that Jeff would ever have would be a lifetime with a CPAP. Yeah, the CPAP. And then for even then, it didn't years. really fully help him yeah. get the air that he needed. My HI kept getting worse, and so now I don't have a CPAP anymore. They also did a turbinectomy, so my nasal passages are open, so um, I can breathe with my nose, keep my mouth shut, except when I'm talking, <laughs> <laughs> just quite often. But, uh, you know, uh, restorative sleep dreams and things like that, and that's where we're hoping as our kids are still growing and forming that yeah. they they get all the oxygen they need to, to grow and develop properly. That's been a major concern to me, just knowing that their sleep is being interrupted, they're not getting the right ratio of oxygen and CO2 in their blood, they're not getting the, enough of the growth hormone that's released at night, that's been a concern to me. Tell so, them about you, tell them about what you. So, I, when I was um, first examined, I should say that everyone else in my family presented such obvious symptoms, I didn't really think I had any issues, so I really focused on them getting checked. and. Just because I was already there, I said, well, check me too. And uh, come to find that I also have posterior a tongue tie and a low tongue position. And um, and even just today, being examined by Dr. Zaghi, I have an actual breathing situation. U-A-R-S. <laughs> U-A-R-S. So, Upper airway resistance syndrome, yeah. I think is what it is. So I'm just so thankful because my symptoms have been chronic fatigue for years and TMJ pain and chronic neck pain. I've had to go to a chiropractor every two or three weeks and my, my body doesn't keep the, um, the adjustment. It just goes out so quickly and I'm just in chronic pain in my neck and lower back. So I'm so relieved to be finding answers. I'm thankful for the work that the doctor is doing. 
and excited to get the word out because I feel like there's so many people who are suffering for nothing with the wrong diagnosis. And so I'm really passionate to, to get the word out. Yeah, and because she's got her tongue tie, she uses her neck to do things that her tongue uh, as tongue muscles yeah. should be doing. So when I would lift, when I open my mouth and lift up my tongue, my these muscles are super flexed. The neck, and that's it. what's causing all this pain and the headaches that I would get. So. So we're looking forward to uh, to getting the surgery and, and uh, the fascia. The little fascia relief. Yeah. Fascia relief. Well, Mel- Lily's also got to have the fascia treatment because she has some joint pains on her wrist that Dr. Zoggy thinks is related to that as well. And, uh, I mean, just so. another symptom that I, as a parent, felt peril- powerless to help her with, and then coming to find out that that's related to it is just a huge relief, because I really had no other answer for her, and she was really struggling with writing. And as, um, you know, I'm at home school, and as her parent and her teacher, I was just really sad for her. I didn't really know how to work through, through that with her. But also for you, I mean, even just days after Jeff's surgery, I mean, it was a big surgery, it was a big deal, and I'm so thankful that we did it, because even just a couple days post-op, I could tell that he was having recuperative, recuperative sleep, that he was having that deep sleep, because he woke up, I have this particular memory of him waking up from a nap, and he had these really vivid memories that he hadn't had in years. He was speaking in really rich language and like really full sentences and uh, it was miraculous to me, such a relief because it was about 10 years ago that I, I, I was the one that recognized that he was struggling breathing at night and I just woke up one morning and I was like, that's apnea. So it's been like a 10 year journey and to come to this place and he was able to check his CPAP machine and... and uh, yeah, you know, just have that, that freedom. And and blood pressure's down. We don't have to be scared about that. Anymore. A lot of recall, a lot of recall on memory. So it's nice to know that everything's still in there, and now like my brain's reconnecting it and yeah. defragging my my brain database. But. And having the right, <laughs> the correct ratio of oxygen and CO two. So just just relief all around.